Hello, this is Wisdom Hunter with another video for Barbaric Fantasy Homebrews. And today we're going to be talking about hex maps for combat. Yes, I know a lot of people just say, no, you can't use hex maps for combat. You have to use squares. Well, I'm going to show you a lot of things today that some may blow your mind and you'll be like, yeah, well, maybe like hex maps will work and they'll work better. And that's why I'm here to show you some things to make hex maps work for your combat and you'll have some more fun. And I think it'll be more interesting and more mysterious and more natural the way hexes flow in combat. All right, so let me show you some things. Let's get into this. All right, so first I wanna tell you, please watch another video. And it's called Hexes versus Squares Showdown of the Battle Maps by Reactionary Principal Gaming with Mr. Max Boivin. And he lays out a great first analysis comparing hexes and squares. He goes through a lot of different things and um, I'll leave a link in the description. And one of the things he really pointed out that I really liked was um, that when you have squares around a PC, you can have like eight creatures attacking it. But when you use hexes, you can only have six. And I really appreciate that. I would rather only have six at a time attacking one of the PCs. I think it creates a better balance for the game. So I want to add more of my analysis. And what I have found out is hexes really are better for combat. So check out his video too, okay? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be getting into here is the distance of movement with hexes. So we want to create a system here that's gonna give us a really good balance of distances around the PC or around a creature that wants to move. So this is what I've found to be the best way to do it. When you have a PC and they can move a certain amount of distance on hexes, you get this hex pattern. If you follow my, my cursor here, you've got this hex pattern like that, but it leaves these flat sides kind of short. So you have to add a couple of hexes on these flat sides in order to make the distances work out right. You'll see here in these three arrows that these distances turn out to be right once you add these extra hexes. So what is the formula for adding a hex on these flat sides? It's the total hex movement minus four. So you'll see on the left here that you have six hexes which is the total movement that this character can move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Minus four is two. So you add two hexes up in these flat areas and you're good to go. Over here, you have a movement of five. One, two, three, four, five. Five minus four is one, so you just have to add one hex. You're good to go. And so if you go below that, if you only have like a four movement, one, two, three, four, minus four, zero. You won't add any. So this little rule really gives you a good distance balance for the total movement that a PC or a creature can do within hexes. Now let's take this total area for movement and see what we can do with it. I want to show you something that may blow your mind. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the total possible movement around a creature and you're going to see that this actually favors hexes a lot. So you take a PC who can move 30 feet and so you see these images down below. So each one of the creatures in the middle can move 30 feet. One's in squares, one's in hexes, right? And those are the total possible movements that they can do. And the one on the left uses squares, so every other move with the diagonal is actually two squares. So that's the rule to create that image on the left. And on the image on the right, it's just hexes. Using that little rule of adding two extra hexes in this particular instance where you have six moves. So you're adding a couple of hexes on those flat sides. So you get that full total balanced complete circular movement of a total area. That's really what we're trying to strive for, and that total area is the circle of movement around which a character can move, okay? Now, on the left, you'll see with squares, there are 120 possible moves that that creature can do to a square. All those different squares add up to 120. But on the right, look at all of those hexes, count them up, and there's 138 different places that you can actually move to within that same space. 15% more places to move. Hexes use space more efficiently. That's simply the case. And that is such a big deal because when, you, when it comes down to tactics and movement and finding all different places to move, you really want that flexibility. You want to open up the space to move around and do things. So you may think that hexes are limiting. No, hexes is actually more abundant. It gives you more options. Squares are actually limiting movement. Squares are actually limiting strategies. Squares are actually not using space efficiently. So you want to use hexagons because you're gonna get a more natural flow of a lot of different things. So 
This is a big, big thing in favor of hexes. Okay, just one more thing that I want to cover here is that when you're creating hex battle maps, a lot of people think squares are better because you can use the right angles better. You're missing such an opportunity. If you, if you limit your map down to square angles, you're simply not using space more efficiently and you're also not doing a more interesting, more mysterious type of map. Once you use hexagons, you get all these interesting angles that really work. Now, when you actually look at a square map, you have up and down, right to left, and maybe 45 degree angles. So you kind of get like four different angles that you can work with. But when you use hexes, you have up and down, right and left, but you also have these angles off to the, off to the sides that work extremely well too. Like you'll see over here, these angles here, and this angle coming down here. So you actually have like six good angles to work with when you use hexes, but you only have four when you use squares. So you're limiting the movement around a battlefield when you use squares. And this is really important and it's really easy to do. And so when, when I create maps now, I lay down the hex grid and then I build around the angles of the hex grid and it comes out perfect. And it comes out with a really nice flow going up and down in different angles it feels like you're deepening into an area, like into a dungeon. It feels like you're rising and flowing. It feels, it feels almost three dimensional, but when you're on a, a square map with right angles, it really feels two dimensional. But when you just put a flat map into hexagons, it begins to feel almost three dimensional. It's really interesting. And so I really like using hex maps. And I've shown you a couple of things here that really speak in favor of using hexes for battle maps. So I would hope that you play some of your battles, play some of your combats with hexes, see how it goes, and get into the feel of it, get into the, the benefits of using hexes. All right, that'll do it for this video on hex maps for combat. This is Wisdom Hunter. So remember, whoever has the most fun wins.